C-scores can be used to help us determine which of two outcomes is relatively better. Here's an example. Scores on the SAT test have a mean of 1520 and a standard deviation of 323. Scores on the ACT test have a mean of 21.1 and a standard deviation of 4.7. Which is relatively better, a score of 1190 on the SAT or a score of 17 on the ACT? And why? Well, now both of these scores are lower than the mean. The mean on the SAT is 1520, this score is 1190. The mean of the ACT is 21.1 this score is 17. So they're both less, but which one, on which one, say this is a student who took both, which one did they do relatively better to everyone else who took that test? So we'll use our z-scores to help us determine that. Okay, so let's get some information down. For the SAT, what we know is the mean, and this is like the way they state this, we would assume this is a population mean. So the mean, mu, is 1520. Sigma, standard deviation, is 323. And the value we're interested in is x, and that was the score of 1190. So for the SAT, we can compute a z-score. So recall the z-score is the difference between the value you're interested in and the mean. In, our, in this case, it's a population mean. So we want to know what's the difference between these two. The score you made on the test and the difference between that and, what's the, and the average. And we know because this person scored below the mean, we'll get a negative re result. So this should give us a negative. If we accidentally switched them, we would get a positive because the larger number would be first, and that should be a clue immediately that we've got them switched, because we know if you're below the mean, you're going to have a negative z-score. Okay, and we'll divide that to find out this difference. How many standard deviations will go into that difference? So we'll divide by the standard deviation. Okay, we're interested in the score of 1190. How different is that from 1520? What's that distance between those two? And then how many of these standard deviations will divide into that difference. And so the difference here is negative 330. And using our rounding rule for z-score to two decimal places, we get negative 1.02. So a score of 1190 is just a little more than one standard deviation below the mean. Below the negative tells us below, and then 1.02. So just a little bit more than one standard deviation below the mean. Now let's look at the ACT. And they told us the mean here was 21.1. The standard deviation for that population was 4.7. And we're interested in a score of 17. Okay, so let's calculate this Z score. Again, we're going to use the formula where we take the, the value we're interested in and find the difference between that and the mean. Again, we know our value was below. This person scored below the mean of 21.1. We should get a negative, and we will, divided by the standard deviation of the population. So 17 minus 21.1 divided by 4.7. So that difference was negative 4.1. And when we divide, we get negative 0 0.87. I'm rounding to two decimal places as we do for z-scores. Okay, so what did we find? I'm going to scoot that up a little bit. We found that the ACT score is not quite one standard deviation below the mean. It's 0.87, not quite one standard deviation below the mean. So what's our conclusion here? Which, on which test did this student score relatively better? Relative to the other students, here's kind of the results that tell us about the other students, the mean and the standard deviation. Relative to that, on which test did this student score better? And what we would say is the score of 17 on the ACT, 
is relatively better. Because while both scores are below their respective means, the ACT score is not as far below the, as the SAT score. The SAT score drops down a little more than one standard deviation. The ACT score, not so much. It's not quite to one standard deviation. So when you're below the mean here, we, we see that um, this ACT score would be relatively better. Its value is higher. Point, negative 0.87 is, is a larger number than negative 1.02. Now, what if both of these scores had been above their respective means? then of course we'd have positive z-scores and we again would be looking for the larger of the two. That would be the case where you are further above the mean, okay, to determine which one is relatively better. <laughs>